I'm going to share with you the story of two kids. We'll call her Joan, because, well, that's what her name is. And we'll call him Marvin, because that's his actual name. I could tell you this is based on a true story, but as far as I can piece together, this is a true story. Joan and Marvin grew up close enough in their childhoods to spend some time together, as evidenced in this photo. Joan was born the oldest of six children, as evidenced in this photo. My mom is a hottie on the right. Oops, I'm getting ahead of myself. Her family moved to Southern California when she was a teenager. That's where this picture was taken. Here's the entire family at the 60th anniversary of their parents. Yeah, they were still in love then. Marvin went to the Army from Michigan and was stationed in Germany. When Joan's girlfriends began corresponding to guys in the service, she tracked down that redhead she knew from Michigan and started exchanging letters with him. As he neared the end of his enlistment, Joan asked Marvin what his plans were when he got out of the service. He wrote back that he thought he might settle down with that girl he grew up with. I think it was just after that he received this picture stuffed in a letter. That's enough to make any GI a bit nutty. Anyway, the two of them ended up getting hitched. Joan didn't discover Marvin's short fuse until he bought his first farming implement. But because of her Christian commitment to marriage, she knew she was trapped. So rather than fight the dilemma, the two of them got together and applied those Bible verses that say, be fruitful and multiply. Here's the Christmas picture, 1965. With all seven children, they multiplied. I'm the hottie in the middle in the red sweater. Here we are about six to seven years later. I'm on the far left. Yeah, I'm the runt of the litter. We settled down on a farm about a mile down the road from, where, from the house Marvin was born in. Here's my folks sitting on the back steps of the old farmhouse in the late 70s, early 80s. My brother Mike insists dad is texting someone here. But since we can only get cell phone service in special spots in the new house, and then you have to stand on one foot? I think he's lying. Here's the silver anniversary photo of my folks. They seem to still like each other then. Perhaps they're smiling because the seven kids they had were finally starting to move out of the house. Here's an interesting two-generation setup at the farmhouse. The top two photos should be switched. Dad's folks are on the left, mom's are on the right. Three of my grandparents lived past 80. This is one of the last photos taken of Joan and Marvin Webster. Dad passed from this phase of life to the next about a week after his 71st birthday. We finished the new house enough for Mom to live in independently until she passed into glory at the end of February 2015. Here's a picture of the last time Mom was with all seven of her children on the back steps of her house about six years ago. This is Christmas 2014. Six of us made a home. I did by a quirk of fate I didn't see coming. May 3rd, 2015 marked 82 years since Marvin was born. April 19, 2015 was Joan's 79th birthday. On May 1st, 2015, Joan's coffin was laid to rest next to Marvin's less than three miles down the road from where Marvin was born. I can attest to the fact that you don't have to go far in this life to make an impact. These two people improved many people's lives they came in contact with. That's a legacy I hope to continue.